Welcome everyone, I am super excited today because I finally received my uh, invitation to get a co-pilot review and I everyone's talking about it and I wanted to talk about it too and without like wasting any time let's get into it. What I have done here is I have created a folder on my desktop named Copilot and it has two files index.html and main.cpp we are gonna work with these two today uh, let's try it out uh, just to try out github copilot first thing what we might want to understand is the difference between github copilot and any other AI based code suggestion tool extension or uh, intelligence extension that are available out there like tab9 etc what tabbing does is it uses ai to suggest your next line of code and github essentially does the same but github is a lot more advanced because it is using the gp3 gpt3 uh ai and op base which is i don't know sourced by open ai and something uh, microsoft has patent patented uh, oh, GPT-3 so if you want to use it you'll have to talk to Microsoft if for permission and so on so yeah how exactly do you use github copilot it's very easy so first you have to do is create a comment you can do that by pressing control and backslash on your computer it will create two backslashes for you and after that you might want to write what exactly do you want so I want basic the plus plus Code. Will you give it to me? Give me some suggestion. Okay, it's not working. So, a better approach to do is first of all, you write your main function. Come on. I string. No, I don't want string. I want to use name space std. That's nice. Give me another suggestion let's try writing our function into main that's nice okay 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 so this entire code was basically suggested by github on its own we didn't specify what we wanted but let's try it out and ask github copilot to give us a code um, to add two numbers so add numbers from user input Okay, so now it's suggesting as it is creating two numbers. We have uh, declared two numbers here. And now we're asking the user to enter the values for do these two numbers. For now, we're taking the input. I'm just pressing enter and tab at this point. I'm not actually writing or coding anything. Press tab, return zero. And again, it is suggesting me to close the curly brace, which I already have. So this is a problem with GitHub Copilot at this point because um, it is con uh, there is a conflict of interest between Visual Studio Code and what GitHub Copilot wants. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, whenever you create a function in GitHub Copilot, and sorry, VS Code, I'm so sorry, call it add, and if you create a single parenthesis, it automatically closes it. Or if if you create a curly brace, it automatically closes it. If you create a square bracket, it automatically closes it, uh, which is nice. But then again, the, this case, case is not the same with uh, the GitHub Copilot because it is suggesting it you line by line. So when I created this first curly brace using GitHub Copilot, the VS Code automatically closed it. By the time I was at return zero, if I and it automatically suggested return zero as well, VS Code. But then again, here it should suggest me return zero again, and then it should suggest me a curly brace, which is. Uh, kind of uh, dicey now what another thing that I want to show you is that you can browse through the solutions that github copilot has synthesized or generated for you and the way you can do it is let's just remove this line and now you could still see that github copilot is suggesting me okay this is a solution but if you hover your mouse over it it is going to show you this little dialogue and it says next solution previous solution if you want to accept that solution you can press tab and you can then open github open copilot if uh, you want to see all the possible solutions that a github copilot has generated so let's try to go to the next solution first which i think is a lot more synthesized and better approach towards this so i'll just quickly press tab 
Uh, but maybe I want to check out other results and other methods of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the solution again and I'll open GitHub Copilot. And once I have opened op Copilot, it will show me all the results. So this is one, this is another, this is another. All of these are essentially the same and uh, there's no different. I mean, they are basically just adding two numbers, which is fine. I can accept any of these solutions by clicking on accept solution. So maybe I'll go with the third one. This looks nice. Uh, right. And then again, for some reason, it has added return zero and the ending curly brace by the fact that we already had. So maybe GitHub Copilot needs to learn that if that <clears throat> code snippet is already present there, you might not want to add it. Or if that line of code is already present there, you might not want to add it. Anyway uh right this is how we can work with c++ uh let's try to do something more complex instead of just adding two numbers um print a pascal triangle let's see if it can do it and okay so it has taken the value n is equal to five first follow that's nice second follow that's nice link j for some reason i don't i don't understand uh okay so this solution is absolutely incorrect this is not how you r write the code for pascal triangle from user input maybe this should clarify what we need um and then yes okay this is again the same this is absolutely incorrect we don't have stars in your pascal triangle we have numbers this is the incorrect solution because if we go on to google and search the same st string again print a pascal triangle from user input python program to print a pascal triangle pascal triangle Let's specify C++. Um, see, this is the first result that we are getting. And it's clearly not the result that we were getting on a GitHub Copilot. So maybe Copilot is stupid. Here's what we can do. Let's go to GitHub Copilot and check the synthesized results that it actually generated. Um, go back. Press tab. I'm going to hover my mouse over it. Wait. Sorry. <laughs> I'll open get a book on it synthesizing ten solutions. Uh this is definitely not the one. This is not the solution either. This is not the solution either. Nope. Nope. Nay. So none of them none of them is uh, this is probably this is not a solution of uh, Pascal Triangle either. So none of them is an acceptable solution for a pascal triangle so yeah okay so we know the shortcomings and the limitations of get a copilot while we're at it i also want to talk about because a lot of people online have been saying things like hey get a copilot is going to take our jobs away and uh, stop making tools that are going to take your own jobs trust me no ai tool is going to take your job at least for next 10 years or 15 years because what do you expect the manager the hiring manager is just going to talk to the client or something and then the client is going to describe that hey i need a, this specific thing done and the catch here is it has not been done ever before and then you hop and then the manager hops onto their computer and then presses tab 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 and voila it's done that's not how things work and also there are a lot of other things when you're actually writing a software there are you're probably following a life cycle model which you need to follow there's probably a method or a way in which you are writing the code so you'll always end up having to modify the result that you have got more moreover github copilot is not aimed as a tool to take away the jobs from developers it is designed as a tool to aid developers elevate their performance and the speed at which they're writing code so instead of trying to figure out 
figuring out things and searching on Google, instead what you can do it, you can describe it to your IDE, have a much more closer relationship with your IDE or your code editor and the code editor, code editor will tell you that, hey, maybe you can do it this way. You can check the solutions and if it works out for you, then it's great. And if it doesn't, then again, use your brain, study maybe. Um, that's it. I personally don't think GitHub Copilot is going to take jobs away from any of the users in the future, in the near future at least, unless and until we come reach that point where we specifically have designed an uh, AI tool which is meant to write code on its own. This tool is not going to write code on its own. You are, you are again telling it what to do and what it is supposed to do. Uh, exactly like how our computers are. Definitely our computers are incredibly powerful, but they're dumb. They cannot do things on their own. You have to tell them what to do, right? And same is the case with GitHub Copilot. It definitely is super intelligent, big brain AI, but it is stupid. It doesn't know what it is supposed to do on its own. It's not self-aware. It doesn't have consciousness, uh, right? <laughs> you cannot just go on to go like, expect to get a co-pilot one day to develop apps on its own because maybe it was bored or maybe one day this guy talking to github co-pilot instead of the managers and developers and describing what they want <laughs> and uh, github co-pilot next day defining the whole thing and creating the whole project on itself maybe then we might want to worry as developers but there's still a long way to go Nonetheless, let's try GitHub Copilot with um, HTML files. Uh, another example. So I, what I usually do is when I am writing uh, GitHub Copilot is that I use Emmet or Zen method of programming. Uh, this is basically a method to again elevate your performance. So if I want to create a div, what I can do is I can create a div and I want to call it container. So this is how I usually work with HTML files, it's a lot faster and a lot better if I want to create a list of an unordered list of uh, let's say five items. So what I can do is I can create a unordered list of uh, five items and then I press tab. So this is how I usually work with HTML files and what exactly do I want here? I want here to be home and then I can do whatever I want to with this menu, but this is not what I want. Uh, for starters, let's uh, wait. I don't want this. Stop giving me suggestions on your own, not unless you are asked for GitHub Copilot. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, let's um, let's create a centered header, um, centered text in a Div called header. Let's see. So wow, it is actually this. This actually suggested to create a div uh, with a class header, and this is a header, right? This is a paragraph. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so this is not what we wanted. Definitely, we wanted um centered text in a uh, div called header oh i just i just wrote dev instead of dev um dev class header with centered dev class header container class row okay it is using bootstrap now for some reason <laughs> what is it doing what is it doing? Stop. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see what GitHub Copilot has created on its own. What is it doing? <laughs> Wrong. It's going to go on again and again. We don't need this. <laughs> Let's see what it generated. Um. Again, right. Okay, so I have noticed another problem here. So first of all, it did not include the. Of course, we don't have Bootstrap 
included from any sources in our project neither from local files or from a cdn but it is definitely suggesting a solution from which includes github uh, which includes bootstrap which is incorrect uh okay this shouldn't have happened <laughs> let's create an entire html file using github uh using i am so sorry using copilot so ah uh, yes the another problem that i noticed was See, not every program, programming language or scripting language uses backslashes as for comments, right? C++ uses it, Java uses it, but Python uses hash. And uh, in, right, your HTML files and XML markup, la or markup languages in general use, use this. I don't know what you want to call it, but this is how you come in things in uh, HTML, which is, which is great, which is fine. But it causes problem because if you go back to our hold on what is this <laughs> i was actually checking out results right uh let's go back um one two seven fifty five hundred right so let's um let's write something for our copilot basic html file suggest me something just send me a header, look at title, head, body, nothing in the body, right? So I want something in my body and I want, wait, I don't actually want something in my body. I want in my something in my body tag <laughs> behind the two backslashes and I want centered text. Hopefully it's going to do it this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not working. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? We have uh, a centered align hello world text, but we also have this. These two, which we absolutely did not want, these are essentially comments, but again, any markup languages, any markup language wouldn't recognize them as comments. So once you have used GitHub Copilot comment, you might want to comment out actually in your HTML file. Which I see or believe is not that big of a task, but it's something you can work yourself around, um, and, and which is great. Anyway, I personally feel that GitHub Copilot is a great, uh, I don't know, great tool, and it is definitely not going to take any jobs away anytime soon, in five years, ten years, sure. But definitely, you're not just going to keep sitting around after five years or ten years. You might want to worry about our future generations. But then again, your Copilot is also generating new jobs and opportunities for people because GitHub Copilot didn't like it wasn't born on its own. There are developers who made it, and we still need developers to make it. We need C developers, we need Python and R developers, we need web developers to make it work. And for that, if GitHub Copilot took two jobs, it has probably created ten more jobs in the in the same developer space. Uh, and I feel that GitHub Copilot is nothing more than a tool to help developers uh, code faster and a fancy, a very fancy, a very gimmicky tool at this point, at this stage. But maybe in the future, it's going to be exceedingly powerful and exceedingly useful. And I personally don't see a lot of people using it uh, like completely dependent on it. Uh, they're still going to prefer tab 9, maybe. Uh, one interesting factor about uh, your uh, GitHub Copilot is that it barely uses any system resources, unlike tab 9, which uses at least 2 to 4 G G GBs on my system memory. And it also uses my disks, disk power, and it also uses network uh unlike and on the other hand we have github copilot and it's not using anything all i can see is code visual studio code visual studio code 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 these are the different instances of visual studio code and they're not actually taking a lot of memory but if i'm using tab 9 so uh, I, I would notice that alongside get uh, your visual studio code you'll have four five instances of tab 9 or any other ai based code prediction tool that you're using which is, I think, a plus for GitHub Copilot, and I love it. So, 
with that out of the way this was a quick video on github copilot i hope you liked it and uh, anyway uh, stay safe take care of yourself i'll catch you guys later in the next video uh, we'll talk about something interesting again we'll do something interesting bye